Hi everybody, this is Lars from CatCamStuff.com. Today we're going to look at SolidWorks sheet metal, more specifically SolidWorks sheet metal gauge tables. So one of the things that I learned a while back when it comes to engineers and designers is that they like to take things apart and they like to figure out how everything works down to the smallest detail. When they don't have that kind of time, they're okay with just some best practices or just getting sent down a direction, a good direction to start with. And that's the idea about this short video here. We're not going to dig into full depth or everything, but kind of like want to get people kickstarted when it comes to sort of like sheet metal and, and how these gate tables work. Um, and stuff like that. So for some of you guys, you guys have, have a lot of sheet metal experience. Uh, some of you guys maybe have a lot of solid exp experience. Kind of like just gonna take and, and, and go quick down and dirty. So let's just jump into solid here. So first of all, two minutes of what really happens. What happens is that when you bend this piece of metal, uh, you actually have some, uh, um, you kind of like a stretching this, this corner here and you're kind of like compressing this corner here. What happens is that this piece here is three by three, but you actually need a little bit shorter piece cut out because at the time you bend it to 90 degrees, um, but because of the stretching, it would actually become the, the three by three. So that's the whole magic when it comes to sheet metal is to know how much smaller um, do you need to cut things to be able to um, to do these kind of things. And you might have a guy out on the shop floor who, you know, old and grumpy who have all this information in his back of his head. Um, but so of course, SolidWorks um, don't, um, you know, have a connection to him. So we kind of like have to input this data ourselves. SolidWorks can handle all the sheet metal, um, but there's a lot of variables when it comes to this. Um, it can be depending on the material thickness, it can be uh, the material type, um, your tooling, you know, there's a lot of variables that software can't handle. And, and for many older shops, this is kind of like just knowledge that's kind of like roaming around. Many times, uh, what you really have to do when it comes to the SolidWorks is that you kind of like need to make like a test piece. And you literally just got to go out and start bending and measuring. So you could do something like I made a configuration here of 110 or 70 degrees. So you would bend a piece like this. And then you could make a measurement here, you could make a measurement here. And with these values, you could actually, you know, figuring out what your bend allowance, bend deduction, or K value is. That's kind of like the three things we are playing with when it comes to SolidWorks is bend allowance, bend deduction, or K factor. So bend allowance, as you can see, I kind of like drew it up here. That's what I kind of like recommend to go with. But you might see that your shop already is using K factor or another uh, bend deduction. So that's fine too. If your shop have already set it up, use that. Uh, K factor is that you kind of like have a center line through here. Um, and when you when you bend the material, that center line kind of like moves over and there's this neutral section and that's what the k factor is now i just kind of like also flatten this out here so you can kind of like see what it actually what it actually means for my material here so this is what what we're after that when i bend this up you know you can see i have a length here and it actually is going to turn into that piece so um what does solid do to calculate this well you can in the properties throw in k factors as a, as a default um, but you, you actually also have these neat gauge tables. Let's just go out to those. So I'm just going to open up my Explorer here. And the default location is your C drive. It's going to be in your program files. It is going to be your version of SolidWorks into the SolidWorks folder there. And then we're going to go for language. In my case, it's English. And in here, you will see that there's sheet metal bend tables, sheet metal gauge tables. Now, they both can do a little bit different, but like I said in the beginning, this is you know kind of like a quick and dirty. I recommend to use metal gauge tables. Now, when you go in here, you will see that bend allowance, there's bend deduction, there's K factor. So, like I said before, some shops use different. You know, already have a lot of this information around. Um, I'm going to use the bend allowance table here. So what I would recommend is that you kind of like rename this to whatever you want here. But let's open it up and take a look at it. So in here, you will see you're going to create a table for what different kinds of material you're dealing with. Okay, so you can make multiple tables depending on the type of material, if it's a soft or it's hard, whatever it is. And then you will see down here that we have the size, we have the bend angles, so there's different variations and the different bend radiuses in the corner because that's also going to affect that. And then in here we have uh, the bend, in my case, the bend allowance. Now, um, this table here, you can modify this. You will see here that there's three different columns. So you can actually go in here and you could 
just go in and do a copy and then you could paste down what i recommend though is that you're keeping the same kind of like um rhythm through the table so you know if it's 15 go 15 30 45 go the radius here don't leave any of these blank then just put like in a dummy number or something like that and then you can do that now where are these numbers coming from um, there is a website uh, it's called sheetmetalguy.com and i don't know who sheet metal guy is I wish I did so I could give him some credit here because this is a great site. He has a little thing here about what band allowance is and you know that's a really good read through. Um, but what we really power about his is that he has a bent calculator you can go to. And this bell calculator here is, is, is pretty neat. Now you need to have four factors in here. And one of the ones you need is the K factor. Now the K factor, um, you know, there is not really any specific chart out there for the K factor. Again, it really depends on your machine, stuff like that. It normally goes from 0.3 to 0.5, where 0.5 would be like your hard steel and 0.3 would be like your soft brass or whatever. So it's gonna be kind of like within that area. But that K factor, whatever you vary, that one will change things down the road. So really what you can do with this one is your K factor in here, and that might be something that you, you know, again, you adjust or, or to, to figure out what you need here. And then you can put in your your um, your size, you can put in your 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 inside radius and then your your bend angle, hit calculate and you will see here that I get this bend uh, allowance number here. So now I can just control C and I could now go into my table here and now I could paste that in. Um, and, and, and then it will use that factor. Now again, you probably have to do some testing within here uh, just to get it accurate. And that's that's just the nature of it. Um, you know, that uh, old grumpy guy out on the shop floor, he didn't get his knowledge just overnight. I mean, that's that's kind of like, it gives you a chance to, to put, it, put it in here. Now, one thing I will say about this whole table, when it comes to testing this stuff out, what I recommend you do is you go into your table here, you can make your changes, and uh, then you can you can save it. Now on the SolidWorks end, um, what I recommend you do is that you actually create a file that just has a sketch on it. So this could be kind of like your test sketch. So what I have here is just a simple um, 90 degree band. And then you go in and you create your, your base flange. You will select that you're gonna use the table. You can select the table that you just make your changes to, in my case, the bend allowance ends. And then, of course, you will see the selection that I had in my table available for me here. You can you can hit that, and uh, then you can flatten it out in SolidWorks. And now, if we click on the ads, we will see that we get some specific length down here. And again, this is maybe something that you need to, to go in and adjust. So what I recommend is that when you get this value here and you see what it is, you go back into your table, you make the changes in here, whatever the, the changes are, and you save the table, but when you come back to SolidWorks, purge out this file, get rid of the file, and then open it up again as a as a sketch here, and do a new base flange, select the gates table over again, and then test out what it is after you have done this again. So you kind of like got to do this every time because if you make a change to the Excel sheet right now and go back into SolidWorks and uh, and just go in and kind of like try to change the table to another table and change it back it might not get those right calculations in there so have that dummy file um, definitely helps but one of the things to understand is that when you do have these values convert into this table now you got the golden book right for for your machine uh, shop and you can now um you can now save this out on the the, the, the server and everybody can use it and this kind of like you know is the knowledge now when it comes to this again if you have that old grumpy guy out on the floor uh, it might time to buy a six pack and invite him in the engineering room and maybe just chit chat with him a little bit and find out what kind of what kind of knowledge you have so I hope this little video gave you a quick overview over really what the kind of like the steps is you can use to solve to get these gauge tables going so I hope you found this helpful um, if you have any questions or any remarks you're more than welcome to email me Lars at catcamstuff.com that's l-a-r-s at catcamstuff.com or uh, you know comment um, and hope you have a wonderful fantastic day